Hi, my name is Chase, and this is an NTOP Live on the Pattern Repetition Constraint for Topology Optimization in NTOPology. Today, we're going to cover the Pattern Repetition Constraint and how to set up a topology optimization utilizing this constraint, as well as look at some post-processing of the topology optimization results, and lastly, how to perform a design verification and how to export the final result back to your CAD system. So jumping into a very brief example file here of using the pattern repetition constraint in our topology optimization, I'm just going to take you through what could be a uh, typical workflow. So initially we're going to generate a design space that we wish to perform the topology optimization on. In this case I'm doing a wheel-like uh, design space just so we can practice with the axisymmetric pattern, rep pattern repetition constraint. First step is to generate an FE mesh, pretty uh, straightforward, and then applying our topology optimization. In this case, we applied some material properties to the mesh. We then created our objective, which is to minimize compliance or to uh, maximize stiffness based on the following load case. And what you'll notice is I only applied the load case to one eighth of the uh, des total design space here, and you'll see why we did that in a second. The next step is to uh, set up our constraint, and in this case we did a typical uh, volume response constraint. Um, essentially we're maximizing stiffness while removing as much volume fraction as we can from the, um, from the design space. Then the second constraint, is the, or the one we're explaining today, is the pattern repetition constraint. And what this does is it essentially uh, allows you to input a cell map, or some div uh, to split up your design space into some number of cells, and then what it's going to do is apply the same topology optimization to, or ensure that the same optimization happens to each subdivision of your overall design space. So the result of a topology optimization like this is going to look um, essentially like this. So you'll notice uh, this topology optimization is kind of applied to each uh, cell of the cell map. In this case, it's an axisymmetric cell map. So after we're done um, with the topology optimization, you'll notice we can play with the, uh, the threshold here. Um, the idea going forward is to select the threshold that we think uh, best suits our needs, and then we can, uh, using NTOP, convert that topology optimization into our own native format, which is the implicit format. And from there, we can easily apply some smoothening functions to generate uh, more aesthetically pleasing and also reduce some stress concentrators um, and kind of get this topology optimization ready for uh, the final assembly. Once we're happy with how this looks, what we can do is uh, some last procedures, reintroducing some passive regions and applying some fillets where the topology optimization meets um, the passive regions as well. And lastly, uh, but very importantly, we want to perform some type of verification analysis because we did choose the uh, the threshold um, more arbitrarily than uh, what what we may have wanted to do. So in order to do that, we can go ahead and mesh the entire uh, the entire new design space essentially. So this includes our topology optimization and our passive regions. And then we can perform a static analysis on the um, on this entire uh, more or less full part. And we'll take a look at our static analysis here, and you'll you'll notice that it is a fairly uniform stress distribution, which is what we are looking for um, for our topology optimization results, specifically when we're trying to reduce mass while maximizing stiffness here. So if we're happy with this, what we can do is go ahead and turn the mesh into a, uh, into a CAD part, and we could export this as a step or other native CAD formats, and uh, you could import it into your assembly or do with it as you wish. So this was just a very quick example of using the pattern repetition constraint in TopOp to create a axisymmetric um, topology optimization, but there are many more use cases. If you're interested in learning more about topology optimization in NTOP, or you're interested in seeing a demonstration of NTOP as a whole, please feel free to reach out at sales at, to sales at ntopology.com, and we can take you through a demo of our software. Thank you.